Marcus has nine candies. Katerina has five candies. Sanjeev gives away a total of ten candies to Marcus and Katerina, so that Marcus and Katerina each end up with the same total of candies. How many candies does Marcus have now? So Marcus initially started with nine. Katerina started with five, right? And then the total, it would be nine plus five plus the ten that Sanjeev gives them. So that is 24. Now this is divided equally because they have the same. So that means eventually it'll be 12 and 12 for both Marcus and Katerina. So that means that how many, oh, they just want you to find out how many they have. So the answer is 12. A square is cut into two identical rectangles as shown. Each of these two rectangles has a perimeter of 24. What is the area of the original square? So let's label this over here. I'll call that X, call this X. And since it, it's been cut into two identical, since this was X and this was X, this is, side is going to be X over 2. So they're saying that each of the two rectangles has a perimeter of 24. So that means this guy has a perimeter of 24. So that means that X plus X over 2 plus X plus X over 2 is equal to 24. So that is 3x is 24, and therefore x is equal to 8. So this x is over here is 8. This is 8. So what are they saying? What is the area of the original square? So the area of this guy right here is 8 by 8, and that is 64. Suppose that A, B, C, D, and E are consecutive positive integers with A less than B less than C less than D less than E. If a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared plus e squared, what is the value of a? a, b, c, d, and e, and they are consecutive positive integers, so I will call them n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, and n plus 4, since they are consecutive. And they, of course, will abide by that inequality. And then we turn our attention to this guy, so that's a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to d squared plus e squared. So we, we're going to substitute. So for a, it's n. For b, it's n plus 1 squared. For c, n plus 2 squared. And then d, uh, n plus 3 squared. And then uh, e, n plus 4 squared. Okay, now we got to expand. So let's see here, n squared plus 2n plus 1 plus n squared plus 4n plus 4, n squared plus 6n plus 9 plus n squared plus 8n plus 16. All right, collect like terms, that whole stuff. Uh, when we do, we have n squared, n squared, n squared, n squared. So this is just going to be n squared. 2n, 4, and that's 6. That will cancel with that, and then we'll bring that over, so minus 8n. And then 1, 4 is 5, and that's 25, so it'll be minus 20. I think this factors, let's see here, n, n, 10, and 2, I believe, minus plus. Yeah, so that means n is 10 since n has to be positive. And what are they asking for? A. Well, A is represented by my n, and n is 10, so I can just write A is 10. Let x bracket denote the greatest integer which is less than or equal to x. For example, pi bracket is equal to 3. s is the integer equal to the sum of the first 100 terms shown. What is the value of x? Let's see what kind of a pattern we get here. This is 3.14 bracket approximately, right? Because you guys know pi is, goes on forever. Uh, 3.14, 159, dot, 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 right? So I'll just leave it at 3.14, but it's not exactly 3.14, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. So this will be 3.14 plus this guy, 1 over 100. So what is that, 0 0.01? Yeah, 0 0.01 bracket. And I'm not obviously not going to write them all out, but just a few. 0 0.02, oops, 0 0.02. Got to make sure I write it correctly. And then the next one, 3.14 plus 0 0.03, and then so on. You guys get the point. And then dot, dot, dot. Now, the key is I have to figure out when does when does the number inside the bracket 
get to four because if it's less than four like for example these guys um the this will be, just be three this one right here this next one will be three the next one will be three the next one will be three and so on right because of the definition of x bracket but eventually you're going to get to a point where it's four so we have to figure out when that is and that happens when let's see here 3.14 plus 85 over 100 that will be 3.99 so i think the very next one 3.14 plus 86 over 100 yeah that's the first time it gets to four and then let me just complete this uh, 99 over 100 which is 0.99 okay so this guy is uh, 3.99 so that's also going to be a 3 so dot 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 that's also going to be a 3 and then every single one afterwards will be greater than 4 because 3.14 plus 0.86 is exactly 4 actually um, so that will be a 4 and then everything after that will be a 4 until the very last guy so now our job is to figure out how many were in each category. So this, uh, the break was here, right? The, the, the between three and four? Yeah. So from, this is 85. So we, we started with one all the way to 85. So that's 85. And then we can't forget that one. So 86. So these guys, there's 86 of them. And then these guys, we're going from 86 over 100 to 99 over 100. So that is, I believe, 99 minus 14, I think. Yeah, 14. So then our sum would be 3 times 86 plus 4 times 14. And that 3 times 86, uh, 258, plus 4 times 56, and that is 314. Oh, interesting number. Suppose that x and y satisfy the equations 3 sine x plus 4 cos y is 5 and 4 sine y plus 3 cos x is 2. What is the value of sine x plus y? The first thing is uh, some of you may remember, and I think they've given this in the exam, the identity for sine x plus y. It's sine x plus cos y plus cos x plus sine y. And what I'm going to do, just for the sake of simplicity, because I don't feel like writing out sine x and cos y every time, or so cos x and sine y, I'm just going to denote them with letters. So I'm going to let sine x equal a, I'm going to let cos y equal b, and then cos x I will call c, and sine of y I will call d. It makes my life a little bit easier. And therefore, this guy becomes 3a uh, plus 4b, yeah, equals 5. And the next guy would be 4D plus 3C is equal to 2. And those are the ones that I will work with. So just a little bit easier for me. Okay, so what? how do I do this? Now, obviously, we have to use these two equations to somehow get the value for this. So we have to use a little bit of fancy algebra. And let's see here. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to take that 3A plus 4B equals 5 and I'm going to square it. Square both sides. So that's going to give me 9a squared plus 24 uh, sorry yeah 24ab plus 16b squared and that equals 25. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing with this guy. So it'll be 4d plus 3c square both sides. So this side would become 16d squared plus 24cd plus 9c squared is equal to 4. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to take this and this and add them. So we'll have 9a squared plus 24ab plus, uh, let's see here, 16b squared plus 16d squared plus 24cd plus 9c squared, and 25 plus 4 is 29. And then, uh, let's see here, 9a squared plus 9c squared. I'm going to factor out a 9 and have a squared plus c squared. And then this, these two 16s factor out a 16 and have b squared plus d squared. And then I factor out a 24. 
and that will give me uh, AB plus CD and that's all equal to 29 now this AB plus CD that's very nice why because that's exactly what I have to figure out here but the rest of the stuff you think oh boy what do we do well the good news very good news in fact is a squared plus C squared uh, was sine X uh, squared and C was my cos right yeah cos X squared and this is a trig identity that most people do remember that is equal to 1 so that just becomes 1 and then very similarly for this B uh, this guy B squared plus D squared B represented cos Y I believe and D represented sine Y and again the same trig identity is equal to 1 so that's 1 and there we go we have pretty much everything that we need and just what the heck I'll just put this in there and this is this so I'll just put sine X plus Y no reason to even put this here and then I think I can solve it so this is gonna be 24 times sine times the X plus Y and it's gonna be 29 minus 9 minus 16 so that's um, 4 I think yeah so yeah cuz it's minus 25 so that's gonna be 4 and then if we take down the 24 that'll be just x plus y is 4 over 24 and 4 over 24 is 1 over 6 so there we go 1 over 6 is the answer to the question which is what is sine of x plus y suppose that f at x is a function defined for every real number x where x is between 0 and 1 inclusive with the properties that f at 1 minus x is equal to 1 minus f at x for all real numbers uh, with x between 0 and 1 inclusive f at x over 3 is equal to 1 half f at x and f at a is less than or equal to f at b for 0 less than or equal to a less than or equal to b less than or equal to 1 what is the value of f at 6 over 7? So in this question, we are going to use these three properties. And we have to use them in a way that eventually helps us figure out f at 6 over 7. So our ultimate goal is to figure out the numerical value of f at 6 over 7. Okay, let's see what happens. And I'm going to keep a tally over here of my values of whatever I get f at whatever so let's start with uh, let me label these this is the first property this is the second property and this is the third property so let me start with the second property and I'm going to use x equals 0 and when I do it'll be f at 0 is equal to 1 half f at 0 so that basically means that f at 0 is 0 yeah so there's my first one okay Let's use the next the next step. I'm going to use property number one when, again with x equals zero. So that's going to be f at one when I plug x equals zero is one minus f at zero. So that basically means that f at one is equal to one. So let's put that over here. Uh, let's see where do I go next here. Uh, I'm going to use the same property but this time with x equals half. This will be f at 1 minus a half, which is a half, is equal to 1 minus f at a half. So that basically means that f at a half, when you solve for this, is a half, I believe. Yeah. So f at a half is a half. Okay. Next one, what do I do next here? Um, let's try property 2 when x is 1. So that will be f at x over 3. Oh, sorry, x is 1, so 1 over 3 is equal to one half uh, f at one yeah f at one so f at one is one right so that means f at one over three is equal to a half is that right yeah so f at one over three is equal to a half okay so far so good now uh, let's see now I'm gonna finally use property three property three with a equal to three over seven that would basically mean that if I put this property here, f at 3 over 7 
would be less than any B, F at B. So let me choose one of these guys that I've already figured out. Um, 3 over 7 is what? It's just a little bit less than a half, right? So I'm going to use a half, so F at a half. Yeah, so that basically means that f at 3 over 7 is less than, what's the value of f at half? It's a half, so it's less than a half. Less than or equal to a half. And then I'm going to do the same kind of thing, but this time I'm going to let b equal 3 over 7. So therefore, f at 3 over 7 is greater than or equal to, uh, I'm going to choose a half. Oh, should I choose a half? Or no, one third, I think. Yeah. I have to choose something less than 3 over 7. So let me choose 1 third. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that would mean like this. And therefore that means that since f at 1 over 3 is a half, 1 half is less than or equal to f at 3 over 7. And if you combine these two, you will see that f at 3 over 7 has to be equal to 1 half. Yeah, because here it's, this guy, it's saying that it's less than or equal to. Here it's saying it's greater than or equal to. So the only commonality there is equal to. Okay, I think we're coming down to the nitty gritty here. I think we're coming close to a conclusion. Now I'm going to use uh, property 2 when x is 3 over 7, since I have the value for uh, f of 3 over 7. So that would mean f at 3 over 7 divided by 3 is 1 seventh, I believe, right? Yeah. And that's going to be 1 half times f at 3 over 7. So that would mean that f at 1 over 7 is 1 half times 1 half, so a quarter. Okay. And I think we have just one step remaining, because now I can just use property 1 with x equal to 1 over 7. And that will give me f at 6 over 7. Perfect. Is equal to 1 minus f at 1 over 7. So therefore, f at 6 over 7 would be 1 minus a quarter, which is 3 over 4. And there we go. Finally, after all that, we got the right answer.